Uh, looking at uh, a report out of the IMF over the weekend, I mean, pretty optimistic. They're projecting growth mm. of 4% for next year. What's your view on uh, Kenya's economic standing right now? Well, I, I think that that uh, projection is probably right on the mark. I think we've got this outsized ICT bet, which is going to start coming coming through, especially now that we've seen some real crushing in internet access prices. So I think we should see an acceleration. We've got the rain right now, it seems to me. But obviously, the big overhang is, is the agricultural side. That's the drag on the economy and the political risk as well. We've got Ocampo in town this week. And uh, I think the stock market would see an enormous rally if we could get some kind of closure, if we could have a no known, as it were, on that. Of course, if we're looking at the major revenue earners for the Kenyan mm. economy, tourism has slipped to being uh, the country's third uh, largest hard currency earner, falling back after uh, horticulture and tea. And the e agreement seems to be that government needs to see that fiscal stimulus is implemented in a timely manner and encourage growth moving forward here. What's your view on being able to depend on government in this regard? Because the market uh, seems to be very uh, convinced by its ability to actually implement and enforce uh, a very effective stimulus package? Uh, I mean, it's a great question, and we can look at it all over the world. You've got the Chinese stimulus package, which has probably been the most optimal. And there's this general sense that government have not been the best spender of money in, in our country. And, and that's where I think you're seeing a little bit of uh, nervousness about, about it. But you know, from what I hear from the Treasury, from what, from what the news that's coming out of uh, uh, the, the finance minister's camp, you know, they, they've really made efforts to, to bring a greater degree of visibility to the money that they're spending. I think it's absolutely key that they do and that the country sees the money being spent well. Obviously, there's been a background of news about money wastage, the water boards being disbanded. You know, we have not had a great history and track record in this regard. That's a fact. If we look at your particular wish list in this regard, I mean, how mm. would you like to see money being spent? Should more be invested in the industrial base of the economy? Well, I, I think, you know, nothing works unless we have a supersized expenditure in the infrastructure side. That's where I would like the government to be focusing. Build our roads, build our railways. Let's, you know, get everything working efficiently. And then you will see a tremendous surge. So I would, I'm, I'm not that keen on stimulus packages mm -hmm. designed for this sector of the economy or that sector of the economy. I think it's far more effective to take a sort of holistic view. What works for Kenya? Look you know, roads all the way east to west, uh, up to Ethiopia, drawing in the region. That's the sort of thing that I think will really gain traction. With that kind of game plan, it would be uh, mm. a clear benefactors of that would be some of your construction companies. Of course, Ati yes. River Mining still in the spotlight. Yeah. It released numbers on Friday. Mm. What did the market make of those? Well, they came very late. They came about 10 minutes before the close. So I think the market is still digesting them. But you know, it, it, it's a very interesting company. The fact that Bamburi were able to exit 14% of a position mm -hmm. in Arthi River Mining speaks volumes for the confidence in the stock and in the management. I like it. I think it's a four to five year game plan. And I think you'll see some serious EPS acceleration. Uh, Pradeep has built, ha, has got a great plan to really take the cement market by the scruff of the neck. And I think that's what Bamburi got uncomfortable with, yeah. the, the nature of the challenge coming from Arthi River. And they thought that they needed to get their money together. So, but I think there's a serious statement coming out of Arthi River Mining, not to be missed. Let's look at that divesture and what it actually means, because it's labeled mm. a deal that would set off fresh realignment in the local cement market. So how do you see that whole dynamic shifting within uh, the cement industry? Well, I think what you have is behind the scenes, obviously, Lafarge is the big player. Mm -hmm. They had a stake in Bamburi. Bamburi had a stake in ARM. And they also have a stake in Portland. So I think it was plain untenable. Or, or obviously, we've not heard any monopolistic noises. But it wasn't very tenable in the region, I think. So I, and I think plus you had this spat at the boardroom level, which made the exit more likely. I think ARM is positioning itself to come out of the second division and play with Bamburi and Lafarge in the Premier League. And I think he has a plan to do that. So I think the, the realignment is ARM is seeking to take a much greater bite out of this market.
Of course, uh, the entire speculation has been that it's foreign yeah. investors that have bought this big stake in yeah. Ati River Mining Shed that have bought the shares there. So what does this say about foreign investor appetite right now of Kenyan blue chips? I, I think it's the same story. I was listening to your interview beforehand. Um, and I think it's the same story uh, as in Nigeria as in here. Here we had this problem where domestic investors uh, 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 gorged on Safaricom at five shillings. The moment it went below five, they were taken out of the game. And what we're now seeing is, is foreign investors who were previously tiptoeing around the edges coming in looking for size positions in companies they feel comfortable with. They are definitely taking up the slack. They're the outsized buyers. And I think the trigger for our domestic shareholders, of which there are very many, you know, we have 1.9 million shareholders at the boss, will be Safaricom, will be the results, and will be pushing it back above five.